Hey guys, in this video, we'll see how to use FFI in Dart. What is FFI? It's a mechanism in which a program written in one language can call other program written in some other language. This concept of FFI is not something new, but existed in languages such as Java, where they called FFI as Java Native Interface. There are some things which need to be considered for FFI. The first is garbage collection. The second is complicated or non-trivial objects and finally the language both or single is running on a virtual machine. In terms of Dart language, the support for FFI was announced since Dart 2.12 and this post is from March 4, 2021. From Dart 2.12, we were able to call the C libraries from our Dart code. This year, Dart 2.18 was announced which released a preview for Objective-C and Swift support. There are already some packages, for instance, file picker, TF Lite, Dbus, which already use the start FFI to call existing native C APIs. There are different ways in which we can use Dart FFI. The first one is when we want to manually create the bindings. So for instance, we are calling a C library and we are generating the wrappers of those C functions manually. Other way is to generate those bindings automatically using a package called as FFI chain. We can also see from the official Dart website where they mention it can be time consuming to write the Dart binding for large APIs and hence they introduce this FFI. FFI gen which acts as a binding generator. This package FFI gen is available in the pub.dev. Let's create the Dart CLI application. So for that we copy this command, paste the command and run it. This creates a sample Dart command line application. So we can see here in the pub spec YAML it comprises of some dependencies like lens, test. Inside the library we have a simple library and inside the bin folder we simply have a program program which calls hello world. There are different options which we can use for creating Dart applications but by default it goes to command line application and the other options include like a web app, a server app and a package containing shared Dart library. Let's start by adding FFI gen into our Dart application. So for that we go back to the FFI gen, we copy this command, paste it and this adds our dependency inside Dart application. There are two ways in which we can specify configuration for FFI chain. The first one is directly including in the pub spec YAML. The second one is having a custom YAML file that specifies this configuration. So we'll start with the second one. We will integrate a library called as NSURL cache which is available in the Apple system. So what this does is it maps the URL request for caching response objects. This library is available in the headers folder of our foundation framework libraries. So let's see how does it look like. So this library imports a header file ns object and does some calculations inside this but we will import this library to be called from Dart. In this file we specify some properties like name which would be the class which will be generated in Dart, language which is Objective-C in this case because this library is in Objective-C, output which is the binding file name, Objective-C interfaces. Here we specify a property property called include which sets it to nsurl cache which is nothing but the, the header of our library. Next is the headers property where we specify the entry points. This path is basically the path in which nsurl cache resides. Finally there is a property preamble which basically we want to reduce the warnings from the Dart code. So we specify properties like ignore for file, camel case type and so on and so forth. Let's now generate the FFI binding. So for that we will copy this command paste it and this generates the bindings in the file which we specified in the config yaml which in our case is url cache bindings .dat. so this bindings file almost 2k line file and this comprises of all the functions written in objective c available in the library such as shared url cache or cache response whatever functions it has these are all converted to dart based language let's create a file called as url cache inside 
inside this file, we first import the bindings which we generated. Inside the main function, we first specify the path to our dvilib. Next, we call the constructor of URL cache library. And since this constructor needs the dynamic library inside it, we do so by calling dynamic library.open and specifying the path. Dynamic library.open loads a library file and provides access to its symbols. And this comes out of this .ffi package. There are two types of libraries which we can use with that FFI. So the first one is static linking, the other one is dynamic linking. Since in this case we are using a dynamic library, we are using dynamic library.open to load it into that. Now we have the cache library initialized. We call the get shared URL cache from this NSURL cache. From the library's documentation, we can see the shared URL cache provides us this instance. This property itself defines that it gets the shared URL cache instance. Finally, we call the properties current disk usage, memory usage, and memory capacity from this URL cache. And these properties are also defined in this library. For instance, current disk usage, disk capacity, and memory capacity. Let's run this code now. So we call the function dot run and specify the file name. So we see the output as current disk usage, disk capacity, memory capacity as something. The second way is using the configuration in Inside the pubspec yaml so here we specify the library which we want to generate the bindings for so in our case it's the time zone library for generating the bindings we just call this this generates the bindings for the time zone library for using these binding we create a new dot file called as time zones dot inside this we import the time zone bindings file in the main function we specify the path to the dvilib next we call the time zone library constructor which takes in the dynamic library once this library is initialized we call the get local time zone from the ns time zone as per the documentation this local time zone is an object that tracks the current system time zone finally we print the time zone name and also the offset from the gmt in which this system is let's run this file using the dot run and specifying the name so we get here the time zone as asia and offset from gmt as eight hours for testing FFI gen, we install two libraries. The first is logging and the second is YAML. This logging package is simply used for logging the records on different levels. The YAML package is used for parsing the YAML file inside our data application. So in this case, it would be pubspec YAML. We create a file FFI 218 underscore test. We set up the log warnings level. So in our case, we set the level to severe. We write test inside our file. Firstly, we create a file object using the URL cache config YAML. We call the load YAML function which comes from the package YAML. This function takes in a string parameter. So what this does is, it synchronously reads the entire file contents in form of a string. The return type of this function is dynamic. We specify the output to be YAML map. We call the config object from the YAML and we pass in the parameter as the pubspec YAML from the previous step. This from YAML function, what it does is creates a config from the YAML map. Next, we call the parse function which takes in the config and generates the bindings based on the config. The bindings generated are in the form of a string. Since the output is a string, we use the contains property to search for keywords accordingly. But for instance, let's say if we want to search this in the generated binding, we can search and we can find here. Let's run our test using that test and specifying the file name we can see here the tests were passed and since there was only one test so it says one test passed 